since 1983 how to continue to be able to do all of this and still be able to be sane and have, you know, um, a regular type of life. But as far as what the listener is really talking about is will there be, you know, a total shift of the planet? My answer is absolutely yes. And the answer is yes because Argus, who is my future self in this lifetime, if that makes any sense, yes, it is does. one of my guides. There is something on one of our websites called, uh, well, it's actually the beginning of the feature film you talked about, which we tentatively called Crystal Skull Chronicles, which I've had no success getting funding for. So I'm working with two novelists. We're going to get that story out this year. But the beginning of it is this there and Argus actually wrote through me when I was in Brazil some stuff about the future because when I reread it I say how the heck did I write that I don't remember writing this stuff so I'm going to give what Argus told me is the future and you know people can just go with it and see what they think I believe this planet will go into that fifth dimensional consciousness that we are going to live in communities that's what I see all the adults will be parents for all the children. And what's going to happen right now between then and when that happens, which I don't know, I'm not so sure that at the end of next year we're going to see this tremendous transformation a lot of people are saying. It may take another 10 or 15 years. I don't really know. I think you got to live in the now. Just take it day by day and see what happens. But anyway, what Argus was showing me is, is the future will be community-based, Everybody will be doing what they love to do. That will be their job. And they will have complete freedom to explore any aspect of life, including the connections that we'll have with the beings that live inside of the Earth, the extraterrestrials. We'll have access to all of that. It'll be like a really a utopia. This is the only vision that I can see. Now, the other experience that may explain why I have this vision is... In the 1990s, I was living in Las Vegas. I was working on a nonprofit organization there. We had access to what I think was an ancient crystal skull through a man from Mexico. And I was just minding my own business. I was walking to McDonald's on a major street. And the next thing I know is, um, you know how in a movie where everything goes from light to dark? My vision went from light to dark. And I'm waking up three days later with the doctor looking at me saying, uh, do you remember the truck that hit you? And I'm looking at him and going like, what is this man talking about? Well, after I came back from this and was conscious, which took me another day, what happened is there was a van behind me that struck me from behind, and apparently I flew up into the air and landed into a gravel area. And I believe that I was taken out of my body. I needed an, exp uh, an excuse so the hospital would take care of me while I wasn't there. And I went somewhere. And all I remember is I went to a big meeting where there were all these beings. It was kind of like you see in uh, Star Wars, you know, where Princess Amidala has this problem and goes in front of all these representatives from all these planets. I was at a meeting like that. And I think that part of what I'm talking about was part of what I saw. Like I could see what was going to happen. So I believe that we're going to have this total world of peace, although I do acknowledge that there are parallel Earths, and some of those parallel Earths are going to have a different type of reality than what I see. But this Earth is eventually going to see peace with people working together and helping each other. And that's actually what I'm starting to see this year. All of a sudden, there are people jumping up, wanting to help us with our projects, and other people that we're working with who are about co-creation. You know, each sharing what we have uh, special to make a difference. So I am very, po I'm very positive about all this. I'm very excited to hear that because I'm of that mindset that, you know, this negative needs to go. Everybody, especially when the stakes are so high and, and we have such a good place to get to, if we just do it together and not hold secrets and, you know, play whatever, you know, um, it's just awesome. But um, mm -hmm. I like, I love it, love it, love it. And I'm counting on that, Joshua. Um, well, where I do think you think? Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. And I was just going to say, it's a power of our mind. What we believe and what we think is what we're going to create. Okay, awesome. Because I think very good. Very nice thoughts. But uh, mm -hmm. where do you think Ami is now? Uh, I don't know where this 
Crystal Skull is. Um, it is one that's very dear to me because it was the one that I had contact with first, not even seeing it in the physical, just a photograph of it that showed me I had something to do with Crystal Skulls, which, of course, I talked about this experience in the um, book Mystery of the Crystal Skulls Revealed. And um, so it was purchased, my understanding, in um, 2009, and that person who has that skull has not revealed themselves yet. So I, I don't really know. I've tried whatever I can, because we have some information for that guardian about that skull, to talk with them, but I really I have no clue where it is. And when I show the pictures I have of that skull, it's a very popular one. A lot of people feel connected to it. They feel the skull is crying out, wants to be released, so it can travel like the other ones, like Synergy, which you was mentioned before when we were talking privately is being shared and Mitchell Hedges and Max and E.T., which Marilyn had a chance to see, which is a human-sized smoky quartz skull, which, by the way, looks like an E.T. And I wow. think so, so does Synergy. Synergy has aspects of an E.T. looking skull. So right. I, don't, I don't know. That actually comes out as a question. Um, how about the Synergy lady? Do you know her? and agree with everything she says about the crystals. Well, I have not been able to follow what Sherry Whitfield is saying um, about crystals or her skull or all of that. I've been in some of her presentations. And what I feel is, is that there is no one person who understands completely what the crystal skulls are about. Even myself, you know, I can give a lot of theories and a lot of ideas and I can tell you what I think probably is uh, more correct, but every individual has to decide for themselves, you know, what they believe. So I do know that Synergy, which she has, is a very old skull. Um, I've heard her talk that she's had contact with some indigenous tribe in Australia that claims they have a twin of that skull. Uh, she was talking about at the Dutch conference where we were both speaking that a lot of indigenous people are contacting her to meet that skull. So that also shows the indigenous people are, are understanding it. So, but I don't know what her, all of her theories are, but I know that she has a crystal skull and she is a remarkable person. And there was one thing that I very much respected that she did at the conference, which is kind of a Joshua style thing that I do when I speak. And that was that she, she was dancing with synergy and laughing at everyone which was bringing in joy, and it just raised the whole energy. So I really respected her for that. That was a, a remarkable thing, and that's part of what she shares. So I have a lot of respect for her and the skull, and also I am grateful that I've had a chance to work with it privately at times. Nice. What will happen to those who are not uh, vibrationally prepared? Well, there's a theory which... I think makes a lot of sense, and that is that there is another planet like the Earth at a similar vibration to where we are now, where as the Earth goes into the higher frequency of energy, that this planet is being prepared because Creator will never give up on any of us or any souls in our spiritual growth and evolution. So that this planet, which is similar to the Earth, the people when they leave the body, and of course we know as spiritual people that, um, you know, we're immortal beings, um, when they leave the body of the earth, that they may have an opportunity to continue the experiences of here on this other planet. There is also another theory, which could also be possible, that as the earth goes into these higher octaves of frequency and energy, that we actually will have different layers of vibrational frequency all existing simultaneously. So the third dimension of the earth will still be there and the people will have to go through the challenges of that reality, that simultaneously there may be a higher frequency that other people will advance to. And in a way, I think that that already exists on the earth because I think if the hollow earth is correct and there are people living on the inner surface of the earth, they are apparently in a different vibrational frequency and dimension than we are. They have to lower their frequency in order to make contact with us, and that's not an easy thing for them to do. Just the same as with spirits um, who want to contact us. They have to lower their frequency 
in order to be able to create um, physical phenomena. And for, for whatever reason, I, I don't know why, I'm becoming interested in uh, contacting and working with mediums and the physical phenomena. So that's kind of a side project right now. And I think the crystal skulls and the energy they bring can help with that. But so far, that story hasn't been told yet. So it's probably a future book or something. That would be great, Joshua. Um, I have another question from the chat room. And what happens when all those skulls are reunited? Well, I don't know uh, in this question when they say all the skulls because there are thousands of them. Um, you know, we've been at events where there are hundreds of skulls and certainly the the energy in the space that we're holding it has been very high. I think what the person's probably asking is when supposedly the right set or the right group of crystal skulls, you know, whether it's this number 13 or 24 or 26 or whatever it is, comes together, you know, I think it's going to act as a catalyst in a way in order to raise the vibrational frequency of our planet so we go into the golden age. So perhaps this is the reason why when I saw me, the pictures of it, and I just got this message that the skulls are vital for humanity, and I've got to do something, and I didn't realize what was being asked of me at that moment, that um, perhaps this is why so many skulls are coming out now, that they're the catalyst that's going to help to bring us into these higher frequencies. But, you know, this is a theory that a lot of people feel and share. So we'll have to see how it goes. So is it possible that I could talk a little bit about what we have on the Internet for people if they're interested? Absolutely. And you read my mind, Josh, but that's exactly where I was going to go is um, we have posted uh, the website on there. But I really would like um, to offer to our listeners uh, how to, get more information your website and all that so please do okay so you probably you might have to write this one down it's a little bit complicated the new website that we just unveiled today finally we have a professional looking website i'm really proud of this we had a friend in atlanta that helped us it's based on wordpress if you design website and know what that is it's at v as in victory hyphen j as in joshua hyphen enterprises like the Starship Enterprise with an S dot com slash Chris, uh, Crystal Skulls, that's plural, Crystal Skulls slash. So that will take you to our home page. Now, we have not been able to bring all of our information to the new website. So if you want to link to, you know, the old site that has all the information, there is another website you can go to a little bit easier, and it's simply whoisjoshuashapiro.com. So you will see some similar information on both sites. There are a couple articles that we did add to the new site, which we've not really shared with people outside of our mailing list. If you want to find us, all you have to do is look on Google under Joshua Shapiro. I don't know how I did this, but I generally come up on the top there, maybe because I've been around for a while and constantly doing new web pages and, and articles. So that's another easy way to find us. And the book that um, Chase was talking about, which is a new book we came out with, it's on Amazon now. It's on um, uh, Barnes & Noble, which is the uh, Nook reader. It's on Apple, but I don't know if it's active. It will be on Google. It's called Journeys of the Crystal Skull Explorers, Travel Log Number 1, Mexico 2009. So what our goal is this year is we're going to be writing what I call travel log books, which are based on our travels. And these are reports that we gave to our newsletter. I'm going to put them in book form and get them out. The next one, which we probably don't have time to talk about this, is we going have to have a couple minutes if you'd like to. Okay. Well, the next one is going to be called uh, The Search for the Blue Skull in Peru. So that's the, the next travelogue book that's going to come out. There were three trips that I took to Peru with this vision of a sky blue skull. And I've never released, like, those notes for all the trips. Um, so I found everything. I have had no time to get that book going yet because we've got too many other little projects coming up. But that will be the next one. And uh, the other thing that may be of interest for people, if you have a connection with Crystal Skulls, because of this conference in Holland that we attended in March, which was a beautiful conference, everybody was working together. 
There was uh, amazing things that happened. Many crystal skulls were there. I received a message that we needed to start an international crystal skull network. So that was birthed in April. There is a link for it on the new website, not on the old website. We haven't gotten that far yet. So you might be interested to join that. And we also offer on both sites I gave our free ebook, which has pictures of our skulls and some articles, and a free newsletter called The Unfolding of the Crystal Skulls, which if you join, we give to you a three-part documentary that I worked on with um, some friends in Europe. Not, you know, I don't think it's totally professionally done, but it has a lot of interesting information. People have liked it. So you get that as a gift if you decide to join our newsletter. So we're just doing the best we can to share interesting news that comes out, and um, we do the best that we can to, to get that information either in our newsletter or you know on the websites or a lot of it we share when we, we travel. Can I also discuss briefly where we might be going in the near future in case some of your listeners might be close by? I would love that. Okay. So if you're in the Seattle area, which is where we're based now, we're going to be at the most well-known bookstore this weekend called East West Bookshop. And then next month in Tacoma at Crystal Voyage, we're going to create what's called what I call the Crystal Skull Gathering. This is not about a conference or a lecture. It's a like an open meeting for people who have interest in crystal skulls, have crystal skulls, are researchers, to start meeting and sharing information. So we're going to test this out in Tacoma. Then in August... I think it's from the 18th to the 21st. We'll be in Salt Lake City doing some events there. By the way, on this first website that I gave you, uh, v-j-enterprises.com slash crystal skull slash, there are events listed. So all these events are listed there with complete information. And then what I didn't have time to add today will be, it's looking like Boston in the middle part of September to the end of September. And then I'm working on New Jersey and New York uh, for early October, possibly Miami in October, and then St. Louis the first weekend of November, and the Star Knowledge Conference, as I mentioned, will be held in Illinois. We'll be there the second weekend of November. So we have some Sounds traveling. Sounds great. Coming up. Yes, yeah. you do. <laughs> we did have um, one more question, if you don't mind. Um, of we course. do have a little bit of time to fit this in. Okay. What are your thoughts on the Mitchell Hedges skull? have been purchased at Sotheby's in 1943 rather than being found Anna Mitchell Hedges in the 1920s near Belize. Okay, well, when she was alive, I did ask her this question because so many people thought, well, maybe her father was, you know, um, telling a story that the skull was found in a Mayan ruin and actually bought it from uh, this antiquities dealer. Well, the answer is, he did buy the skull from the antiquities dealer, but according to his daughter, what happened is in the 1930s, he wanted to do another exploration, and he had a friend named, um, let's see, I can't remember the, the last name of this gentleman. He had a personal friend, and what he did is he used the skull as collateral, gave it to his friend who promised him he would never sell it. So sometimes the crystal skull is called by the name of this gentleman who I can't remember what the last name is. Anyway, Mitchell Hedges did not repay the loan, so the son of this man became impatient, and he offered it up for sale in 1943. So Mitchell Hedges quickly got money together and purchased it in 1944, and ever since then it's been with the family. So this is the story that Anna Mitchell Hedges told me how it went. She claims, and I asked her this question as well, that she was there in Belize, it's now called Belize, the country where it was found, in Lebanon, she saw something reflecting sunlight from the pyramid that she was climbing on, which had damage. It looked like there was an earthquake that hit this Mayan city. And she told her father, who got the local Mayan natives together, to lift the heavy stones. She was lowered inside the pyramid and came up with the top part of the skull. This crystal skull is a two-piece skull, two separate pieces. The lower jaw, uh, the, the lower jaw, is separate from the top and they fit together. So, And then apparently about six weeks later, they found the lower jaw close to that area. So this is the stories that she tells. For me, the way I look at it is I've been in the presence of that skull. It is the one that has been the most powerful and affected me in the most powerful way. 
I feel it's very old. I know a lot of other people do, and I know some people feel, no, maybe one of the advanced carvers in either Oberstein made it, and it's just because of the way it's carved, it's, it just has picked up a lot of energy. It's very mysterious, but a lot of people's lives have been forever changed by being in its presence. So I just accept the story told by the Mitchell Hedges family, and I'm grateful that that crystal skull has been available for people to experience directly. Very nice. Um, there's such a reverence to it, and, uh, you know, I have a piece. It's not a crystal skull, but, you know, a very reverent piece um, of art in my home. And, you know, it, it's kind of sacred to us. And how do you clean it with, you know, I mean, is it done in, in a ceremonious way with smudging or charging in a moonlight? which I know is very Wicca, um, you know, it's very innocent uh, question is, like, how do you keep it from collecting if it gathers data, you know, negatives? Is, is that something you even worry about? Well, I would say that the concern is more, excuse me, with the newer crystal skulls, because newer crystal skulls really don't have any energy until they come into contact with the Guardian. But what I found... Again, using Portal de Luz as an example, is after about three months of meditating with him almost every day, and of course it was with his favorite song, Pasha Bell's Canon and D, there eventually came a point where whatever is the intelligence or the spirit that's working through it started to develop its own system of protection. Now, of course, in the sessions that we do, after a person is working with one of our personal skulls, we will cleanse it with water. I mean, you can cleanse it with incense or smudge it. Um, the crystal skulls, they love to experience every energy there is. So putting it in the moonlight will enhance it. Putting it in sunlight will enhance it. Putting it in a, a body of water will enhance it. Taking it up into the mountains. Taking it to a sacred site. Putting it in crop circles. What happens is between the guardian and the skull eventually is some form of communication. And that form of communication usually is whatever is your spiritual gift. Are you using intuition? Do you see things? Do you know things? Do you have dreams? The skull already knows the guardian and knows how to communicate with the guardian with whatever are your inner gifts. So the skull, if you're listening, will start to say how to activate it, how to cleanse it, how to work with it. So a lot of people, when they get a new skull, it's like, okay, I have it, it's beautiful, I love it, but what do I do with it? And the key is you have to listen to the skull, and it will guide you. But you have to trust in your inner gifts. This will become more and more important in the years ahead, that we listen to our inner guidance as all kinds of crazy things, both those that will be beneficial and those that may be challenging, are going to continue to go on on the earth over the next year or two. Right. I know that you talked about, um, you know, what's in your future and, and your next projects for um, traveling and, you know, um, getting out the word and, and doing some of these things. But is, is there something very specific, like a personal goal um, that you would share with us that you might be doing personally with your crystals to help advance your relationship? Well, I would say... My most important projects at this point in time would be to get our movie project done because telling a powerful story, inserting, you know, uh, truths, things that are actually going on from the paranormal, it could awaken so many people. And if we could have an ancient skull, like, you know, I have a dream, maybe the Mitchell Hedges skull could be the skull in this movie, it could, that energy could really transform and, and change a lot of people. Now, how that's going to happen, I mean, I had um, some kind of shaman in Peru and Lake Titicaca tell me, oh, yeah, your movie's going to get done. Well, maybe doing the novel version of it may be the way to do it. I don't, I don't really know. The next thing that seems to be important is finding crystal skull guardians, researchers, teachers, and saying who would like to work together on projects and see where that takes us. Because this is the message. Every time I'm around our skull, they keep whispering. Remember that, co-creation. Don't just focus on what you're doing. Try to find partners. Try to find other people. Now, those other people do not necessarily have to be connected with crystal skulls. It can be other areas of study as well, like, you know, UFOs linked to crystal skulls. Um, 
the manifestation of spirit, communication with spirit, that's important. So, you know, just getting out the best information. And then I would say the last part is, and this would be, you know, the fun thing is just meeting more people who are part of soul family where you don't have any disagreements with them. You just love them and accept them. And when you work together, it's very harmonious because that's where we're going to go in the future. We're going to be working together harmonious, slapping each other, hugging each other, creating amazing things. So I see more and more of that is, is is happening. And every time we travel, we always meet soul family. So that's kind of like the reward for doing the work, I would say. Right. That's um, Now, if you were interested in, in getting uh, a crystal skull, um, a personal crystal skull, do you go to Amazon? I mean, where do you buy these? Um, crystal skulls are they specially made for you is there a place that you personally would recommend so that we're not getting the you know one off the assembly line exactly um i would say just to work with people who are you know working with crystal skulls this is why we're also making them available for people and i'm very happy that we just made this contact with these remarkable chinese covers because when people are ordering skulls through us we're charging them with our own skulls, or we're educating them how they can activate the skull. The key is you look at a photograph of it, and it's either for you or for not. You feel it or you know it immediately. Right, right. Joshua, I cannot thank you enough. It was a spectacular show. Uh, your information is is not only epic, but it's it's very important, and it's personal, and it, it's so helpful. And um, we would love to have you back as soon as possible um thank you so yeah. much for coming you're very welcome and i'm happy to come back anytime that's great i want to say thank you to jamie who uh kind of holds my hand sometime knowing this is my first um solo and daniel um daniel is our technical director at epic and uh, he's also behind a lot of um everything we do and he's definitely going to be my uh, right hand but next week, please join us um, as we have guest host Roger Peacock, and his guest will be Ken Storch. Uh, please join us after the show on EpicVoyagers.com forum, and we can continue tonight's discussion. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night. Bye, everybody.